Welcome to Iceland Virtual 2021. Good afternoon, everyone. It is my great honor to welcome all of the participants today in the 12th session of ISWAM Virtual. I am Dr. Sylvia Leric da Silva, and today I will be your chairman for the 12th session, which will talk about the ultimate guides of aesthetic in body sculpting and female genital. We have two very interesting topics for this session. The first one is female intimate rejuvenation using dermal filler that will be brought to you by the famous Dr. Diki Prawiratama SPKK from Indonesia. And the next topic will be about body sculpting, personal experience with cryolipolysis brought to you by Dr. Luciano Lanfranchi from Italy. And we will now soon start with our first topic covering about the female intimate rejuvenation using dermal filler. I would like to remind all of the participants that if you have any questions, you can ask through the live chat below and we will read your questions to the speaker at the end of the presentation. Now we would like to call Dr. Diki. Dr. Diki graduates from Gajah Mada Medical University and has a working experience in Erha Derma Center, Yogyakarta, and also owns a Beauty First Aesthetic Clinic, Yogyakarta. Without further ado, I would like to call Dr. Diki. Hello, Dr. Diki. Hello, Dr. Sylvia. How are you? <laughs> Fine. How are things in Yogyakarta, Dr. Diki? Trying to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Same everywhere, yeah? Healthy. Yes, I, everyone is in the healthy conditions and being grateful for what we have right now. Amen. Uh, today we are going to talk about a very, very interesting topic that is not often talked about, yeah, Dr. Diki. So we are really looking forward for your session. The time is yours, Dr. Diki. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sylvia, for the time. Uh, hello, every doctors. Uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Dr. Diki Prawiratama. I'm Indonesian board certified dermatologist. And today, I'm very glad that uh, from ISWAM, a committee assigned me to talk about something that might be a bit funny, which is because not much Indonesian especially doing it, but I guess most people in the Europe or in the Eastern Europe mostly, uh, they already done this uh, procedure uh, regularly. So the topic for, for my talk today is female intimate rejuvenations using dermal filler. Okay, let's start with the background first. As we know, external ge female genitalia loses elasticity and volume with age. In the literature, mostly the technique available is to reduce the redundancy of the labia minora, but only few describe the augmentations of labia majora. As we know, as we age, uh, the female genital area become a bit less attractive. Uh, and for some women, it induces their anxiety. A clear example of aging of the female external genitalia is provided by the thickness of the vulvar epithelium, which, as we know, it reached the peak during reproductive years and decreased with age. But not all the layer. Mostly the one uh, decreasing is the labia majora, while the labia minora increasing in its size. And vascularization also reached peak during pregnancy, especially uh, 
during our puberty and while it rapidly decreased during menopause menopause and it causing the blood supply to decrease also then giving a pale appearance of the genital ex, uh, external genitalia in the female and the advanced age and following the loss of the follicular activity the external genitalia and labia majora lose its subcutaneous fat while connective tissue relax and become less elastic uh, this causing the an attractive uh, appearance of the vulva itself for, for some women. And macroscopically, what I said before, labia majora decrease their tone and volume while the labia minora increase in size. So what actually it's supposed to be inside, it come outside. It, if we talk about something like uh, a door, double-sided door, uh, the, the outside part is the labia majora it become decreasing, it's, it's shrinking, while the inside is going out. So it's uh, very unpleasantly to see for, for some women. And there are some procedures that aim to rejuvenate the female genitalia, especially mostly for labia minora. For example, the wedge resection, edge resection, ziplasty, or modified resections. But the rejuvenations of labia majora itself is not much being discussed. While the rejuvenation of labia majora is able to give, to improve the aesthetic aspect of the female external genitalia, producing a more youthful appearance while augmentations of the moon pubis could improve the discomfort during intercourse or reducing trauma along the pubic bone. Uh, as we know, because of the uh, labia majora become shrinken, sometimes when they having intercourse, uh, some women feel a bit painful or sometimes if they, they like to do sport, uh, for example, cycling, uh, it gives them uh, discomfort during the, the cycling sport. And there is one uh, very good journal being published by the Elena Fasola and Ricardo uh, Gazzola, medical doctor, being published in the Aesthetic Surgery Journal in 2016 about the labia majora augmentations using hyaluronic acid filler uh, using uh, some several techniques. So uh, according to this uh, journal, as we can see the hyaluronic acid infiltrations of labia majora is able to provide a significant rejuvenation with simple outpatient procedures. So this, uh, this treatment is very easy actually and can be done in the outpatient clinic setting so a patient doesn't have to stay overnight in the clinic. Uh, and whom to inject? The first is we have to, to understand first the classifications of the uh, labia majora hypotrophy. There is three staging in the labia majora hypotrophy, the stage one until the stage three. Actually, who need it is the stage two and stage three. Uh, since stage one is only mild hypotrophy, which the distributions of adipose tissue is usually uh, still symmetrical. And mostly it happened due to loss of weight. While stage two and stage three, uh, it causing symptom, which is not comfortable for some women, for example, as dryness, dyspareunia, soreness, and we can see some uh, affecting their mental health because they don't feel confidence when they have to do the intercourse. Before we continue to how we do the injections of the labia majora using hyaluronic acid, first we have to understand first the vascularizations of labia majora. Uh, most of the vascular, uh, vascularizations of labia majora comes from the internal pudendal artery here, which will have branch on the dorsal clitoral artery and also the deep artery of the clitoris and the posterior labial artery. This uh, artery will perforate uh, the subcutaneous labia majora flap. So if we, if we uh, think uh, labia majora and labia minora as two double side uh, door like this, actually the artery like here. This is the labia majora, this is the artery, and this is the labia minora. So it's quite safe to do the enhancements by using uh, dermal filler as long as we stay in the labia majora sections. 
and where to inject, we have to understand the region in the labia mayora. There is two main region in the labia mayora. In the white arrow here, we can see actually is the lip dartos. What is lip dartos? It's a layer composed of smooth muscle cell immediately just be beneath the skin. This layer composed of smooth muscle and more represent in, uh, in the lateral side and inferior side of the labia mayora. So if we can see if this is the labia mayora and then this is the inferior side, so it is more to the lateral and to the inferior. This is mostly where the lip dartos exists. And this is the first place that we can enhance using the dermal filler. And the second part is the fibrous tunic, which contain the adipose uh, tissue of the labia mayora. This is the red arrow. So this is the lip dartos, and this is the fibrous tunic. There is uh, several injection technique that being proposed to enhance the labia mayora uh, using the hyaluric acid. The first is we have to do it in two layers uh, infiltrations. One third of the layer, one, I'm sorry, one third of the pre, uh, filler uh, placement should be placed in the subcutaneous layer, while two thirds are injected between the lip dartos and the fibrous tunic in the fan shape uh, fashion, or you can use cannula using the step uh, technique. So if we go back again to the anatomy here, one third you fill it on the beneath, just beneath the skin and the two third you put it just right on the lip dartos. So it will give the augmentations of the labia mayora itself. Once infiltration is complete, uh, you are suggested to massage uh, to give a homogeneously distributions of the filler. The technique being used here, uh, mostly I use cannula technique because it is safer, but sometimes it gives uh, discomfort for the patients. That's why infiltrations by using lidocaine with uh, epinephrine is suggested. If we want to do the lidocaine there in that area, we can use uh, lidocaine 2% with epinephrine 1 per 100,000 on each side. And you just use it a bit, for example, around maybe around 0 0.5 to 1 cc uh, for each area. And this area is usually located on the vestibular vaginal edge of the labia mayora. And then once it's become uh, anesthetized, you can start injecting the filler by separate it into two layers. The first layer, one third injected, just uh, placed under the subcutaneous layer, and the two thirds are injected between the lip dartos and also the smooth muscle. Once it's complete, you have to massage so there is no lumping. And uh, the thing you have to remember, if you are going to use more than two cc per session, it's better that my patient make another appointment uh, in at least four months after. So for one session, uh, two cc divided into two labia mayora. So each side will uh, receive around one cc of fillers. This is the video that I used to injection technique using the sharp needle. The patient is 53 year old patients with moderate hypotrophy of the labia mayora and the patient already done reductions of their uh, labia minora. This is the preoperative re uh, preview. As we can see the labia mi minora is already been uh, dissected here. And we can use the needle, sharp needle by injecting it on the lateral side using the fan technique. Once you inject it, uh, massage to give the homogeneous distributions. This is the third week appearance just after the uh, filler. Okay, this is the technique using the Z method. The Z method uh, using cannula in this case, 22G cannula, we make first the insertion hole in the upper part of the labia mayora. Because using cannula will be a bit painful, that's why I do suggest doctors to use a lidocaine with epinephrine to reduce the discomfort during the procedures. As we can see, the first 
one third of the filler is placed just beneath this uh, subcutaneous tissue. That's why there is a slight shadow of the cannula if you, if you see carefully here. And then after we reach the inferior part, we move the cannula in a Z shape. Make sure that every time you place the filler, uh, do light massage to enhance the homogeneity. Because if you don't do the massage, sometimes patient will feel a bit lumping or during the intercourse, it will feel weird. As you can see, there is still a slight shadow of the cannula because the placement is just beneath the subcutaneous layer. Okay, after you place the product, you do the massage here. Okay, and that's all. Okay, now we continue to the next slide. This is the after of the filler procedure that done previously. As we can see, uh, the appearance of the labia majora is quite more pleasing to the eye because the labia minora is now tucked inside. So it doesn't come out like a tongue. And also in this case, as we can see the labia majora giving a fuller appearance. And because of the fuller appearance, it will give benefit for patient if they like to do sport, if they like to wear bikini, for example, because it will increase their uh, confidence. And not just about the confidence, later I'll show you the global assessment of the satisfaction of the patients. This is the my patients that has been uh, uh, done the filler using one cc for each size. As we can see, the labia minora without the resection is now being tucked inside with a youthful, more youthful appearance. This is the global aesthetic improvement scale pre-operatively and 12 months post-operatively. Mostly a patient still very satisfied with the average satisfaction is more than 8%. Uh, as, as we know that sometimes if we want to enhance the labia majora, sometimes we want to make it very full, but do not do more than two cc per labia in the same session to avoid accumulation of filler, granuloma, and ischemic complications. Since there's not much actually any paper write about this, so better be safe. And when administering hyaluronic acid treatment, the ischemic complications of filler accumulations is, can be thoroughly taken into account. The caution that should be a thing is when we did the vaginal lining, because some uh, doctors do the filler not only for the labia majora, but they also do it for the vaginal lining. The problem of the vaginal lining filler, there is one report about the hyaluronic acid pulmonary embolism due to illegal cosmetic vaginal procedure. That's why if you want to do a vaginal lining rejuvenations, make sure you use a very low uh, molecular weight uh, hyaluronic acid and a non crosslink one. But if you can, better, you can do it with another method, for example, as like, like CO2 laser or maybe high focus ultrasound. It's better than just injecting on the vaginal line itself with uh, HA. How actually vaginal lining HA injection work? Um, actually, it will give uh, benefit by hypothesizing that HA in the vaginal mucosa may directly enhance its tropicity but further study need to be elaborated because uh, HA itself plays an important role in tissue regeneration process by facilitating the influx of many different types of cell into an area of damage. If we can see from this journal, 
there is an interaction between the cell surface, uh, such as the CD44 and the HA, to enhance the cell addition, cell proliferation, and cell migrations. That's why uh, SA-based therapeutic option for patients experiencing epidermal dysfunction, as well as aging-related fulvo vaginal disease, is might be put into considerations, but have to be done in a very careful manner. And I guess that's all my uh, presentations. Thank you. I give back to Dr. Sylvia. Sorry. Hello. Thank you, Dr. Diki, for the presentation. Thank you for sharing with us your very interesting experience and also for, for sharing us the pictures so that we can see and imagine in reality how the difference from the before and the after is looks like. Yeah, uh, how in the beauty of the inside come outside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in the chat room, there, there has no question. There is still no questions. Maybe the participants are still a little bit shy. I don't know. <laughs> but maybe Dr. Dickey, you can tell us more about uh, what kind of sensation did the patients experience right after the treatment? Is there any uncomfortable feeling or any side effects from after the treatment? Okay, so uh, if we see carefully again during the treatment, I'll, I'll replay the video mostly. When I did the injection technique using the cannula, sometimes the patient, the patient feel a bit uncomfortable because um, there is a very thick or dense layer in the labia majora, and sometimes it causing discomfort during the procedure. And after the procedure, sometimes the patient feel pain. That's why uh, in my practical clinic, I suggest uh, all the doctor, if you want to do the cannula technique here, uh, it's better to use uh, lidocaine with epinephrine to reduce the discomfort uh, during and after the procedure. Since Sometimes the patients feel a bit uh, weird sensations in their uh, genital area because now it's mostly they, they live with some lack of the volume. Now it's become fuller and they feel something like it's, it's weird at first, but, but the second, the third day, they feel like it's better. They, 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 they feel more confident. They, they feel happier when they see themselves. And the painful is is the pain is not that much comparing to the results. So uh, mostly the patient will come back to the clinic to do it again. Okay. And uh, about the uncomfortable feeling that the patients have, how long does it usually last, Doctor Dicky? Maybe it just lasts for one to two hours. After that, uh, it will go. Okay, so for the next day, patients already feel normal again, yeah? Yes, feel normal. And as we know, uh, any kind of hyaluronic acid will attract water. Uh, the, the moment when actually the labia majora become a bit swollen, looks more beautiful. Uh, they, they, they feel so confident about it. They, they feel very look nice when they wear any underwear, especially if they like to wear bikini, it looks mm. so good. Sometimes it improves their, their, their sexual life with their partners. Okay, we have, oh, we have a compliment from Dr. Kishanti. Very nice presentation, Dr. Diki from Dr. Thank Kishanti. <laughs> and I bet everyone is saying the same thing, yeah? Dr. Maria Angelina has a question for you, Dr. Diki. Sure. Uh, doctor, right now you presented using HA filler. Is there any recommendations using other base filler? Okay. Uh, because for until nowadays, there is not much uh, paper or research done uh, regarding the augmentations of labia majora using foreign object. That's why 
SA filler is a good option. Why? In case of uh, there is incidence of obstructions of vascular obstructions or occlusions, uh, if we use uh, SA filler, it will be easily uh, being reverted by just using hyaluronidase. But if uh, you use, for example, for example, like PLLA or another kind of filler, it will be a bit difficult if there is uh, incidence of uh, obstruction or occlusions of the internal pudendal artery. Although, as we know, as we uh, as I, I mentioned before, that uh, infiltrations of the filler in the labia majora is quite uh, safe because the uh, artery here actually it comes on the flap from the labia majora and the labia minora so labia majora mostly is like a no vascular there the fast the the artery is only lying here between the majora and the minora but uh, we never know if there is uh, incidence of of occlusions or compression so better using some filler which can be degraded easily by using hyaluronidase okay uh, we have some more questions coming in, Dr. Diki. Uh, from Dr. Dia Wijiana, when can we re-inject the hyaluronic acid filler and how many sessions usually is it needed to reach a satisfying result? Okay, uh, in my practice, mostly uh, one session is enough to improve the appearance of the labia majora because uh, we, we, we use quite a, a lot of the filler. For each labia moyora, mostly we use one to two cc of uh, HA filler. But if uh, the patients wants more, especially if they are in the stage three of the labia moyora hypotrophy, then uh, it is suggested that each sessions being uh, spaced about four to six months ahead. Okay, four to six months, okay. Yes. And uh, again, from Dr. Keshanti, I, labia compartment is quite large. What is the maximum dose? I think it's the maximum dose per session, yeah, Dr. Diki. A maximum dose per, per session for each labia is 2 cc. So if we, if we total from the left and right labia majora, it will be about 4 cc. That is in one session? In one session. And then after four to six months, we can uh, repeat yes, the procedure. If feel that the, the, there is decreasing or they are not very satisfied yet, at least we, we give four to six months before we do it again. Okay. Uh, again, from Dr. Keshanti, can we use soft hyaluronic acid filler in superficial layer for good skin quality? Yes, uh, if you want to use a soft filler, uh, in this case, a low viscosity filler uh, for the skin quality, you can use the skin booster injected in the skin of the labia majora. That will be fine. But if you are planning to inject the skin booster or very low viscosity HA to the vaginal lining, it's better to use a non cross link filler. Okay, because of the complication that Yes. Might arise, yeah. yes, because there is one case reported about the non-pulmonary embolism due to the filler. Okay, and maybe you can elaborate more, doctor, because Dr. Nancy also asked about, is there any complication? Okay, uh, until recent, because the, the, the paper being, being published is very few, even myself uh, start uh, arranging the, the paper itself about the patient. Um, there is not much report about the necrosis or obstructions or occlusions that happen during the labia majora injections. But there is one paper that I, I mentioned before in my, my slide, if you can mm -hmm. see here. This is the, okay. This is the incidence where there is a hyaluronic acid pulmonary embolism due to injection from the vaginal, uh, vaginal lining. That's why uh, in my practice, I always uh, keep the filler for the labia majora, but the, if the patients want to do vaginal lining, we can use the energy-based device better than the uh, HA filler. Okay. And Dr. Yeni also asked, Dr. Diki, how about combining it with PRP injection? Can we do it in the same session? 
Yes, actually there is one a very interesting uh, paper published before, but unfortunately I don't put it here because I don't think it's match with my 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 topic about the HA. Uh, this doctor actually uh, mixed the very low viscosity HA filler with a PRP, and then uh, he injected it on the labia majora, and after fourth week, uh, yes, if I'm not mistaken, after the fourth week, the rejuvenation is very good. But as we know, sometimes when we make PRP, we have to make sure the quality of the PRP itself. If it's not good enough, then actually better you just uh, stay on the HA filler. Okay. And another question from Dr. Maria Angelina. Is there any kind of contraindication for using the filler en enhancement? Um, uh, come back again because there is not much consensus about this new technique. So there is uh, no contra, no restrict, no very strict contraindications. Uh, but in my opinion, if you cannot uh, feel the the labia mayor flap uh, around the the corner, then you just don't do it. Because if you if you do too much on the lateral side, there is actually where the artery artery lies. That's why just always main stay on the middle part and the inferior part. That's uh, just my tips. Okay. And talking about the type of the HA filler, Dr. Diki, mm -hmm. this is a question from Dr. Ubeta. Which viscosity type of crosslink HA is used? Very viscous, like for deep or light viscosity, like the type of filler we choose for the labia majora enhancement. Okay, uh, mostly I will use a very low uh, low viscosity filler with the SA concentrations. Uh, I guess it should be less than twenty milligram per milliliter, mm -hmm. and then uh, the simple. The simple tips is uh, you can use the filler for tear trough, for lips mm. to enhance the lips down there. <laughs> <laughs> the lips on the upper part and on the lower yeah. part. <laughs> Never use the, the filler that you use for chin, for example, or for cheek to enhance the lips down there. Just use the filler that you mostly use for the lip here, for the lips down there. Okay, that's easy to remember, yeah, Dr. Diki. <laughs> uh, another question from, there is still one more question from Dr. Maria Angelina. In combining with energy-based devices, can it be done on the same day? Uh, in my opinion, I always like to do the two different type of treatment in the separate uh, manner. So if you want to do the filler first for the labia majora, then better to do the EBD on the one or two weeks ahead. Or you do the EBD first, then you do the labia majora enhancement using the HA filler. Why? Because as we know, sometimes the heat from the EBD itself can decrease the lifespan of the filler and sometimes it can actually uh, causing migrations of the filler because we put something inside the vaginal uh, mm. lining right uh, and then the filler might migrate to somewhere else that might might causing obstruction or occlusions of the artery so better use uh, if you want to do the EBD and the filler put some separations there okay if we we do the filler first. How long should we wait before we start the EBD treatment, Dr. Diki? Okay, because most filler will uh, stable on its uh, positions around 72 hours. So I, I guess it will be good if you give some like one or two, two weeks ahead if you want to do the EBD. Okay. And in your experience, Dr. Diki, is this kind of treatment uh, nowadays are gaining popularity in the population? in your clinic? Yes, because uh, nowadays women women start to, to believe that actually uh, their confidence is not just about the face. Uh, sometimes they need to feel good about themselves. And by, by having uh, a confident, a beautiful, useful, a nicer appearance of the genital, they, they will feel better about themselves. And uh, you know, in Indonesia there is 
quite increased trend of women cyclists. As we can see everywhere in every town, like people start mm. going uh, by bicycle. By, to go, yes. yes, by everywhere, and mostly that. Uh, women age around 40 to 60, they will experience the stage two or stage three hypotrophy of the labia majora. And by giving the, the uh, HA filler on the labia majora, it will improve their, their, their comfort during the cycling. Oh, okay. So it will increase the quality of life even Yes. It, not only in sexual areas but also in sport areas like what you yes, see true because as we can see the the global aesthetic improvement scale here the the gais is not only about the sexual uh, uh, improvement but also about the life quality uh, we can see here uh, in the stage two and stage three there is quite increasing uh, in the 12 month post-operative around more than eight point three at least so it's quite uh, suggested for for patient that has stage two or stage three uh, labia majora hypertrophy okay uh, another question dr Ricky from dr maria angelina how about treatment using stimulator that is plla or calcium hydroxyapatite is it recommended uh, for for this type of uh, treatment using PLLA or calcium hydroxylapatite, I didn't recommend it because as we know that there is no such uh, very strict guidelines about the filler in this area. If there is uh, mal events of uh, occlusions or obstructions of the internal pudendal artery, it will be very hard for us to manage that kind of uh, incidence. And HA filler is way easier because if there is some kind of obstruction, we can just simply inject the HA uh, hyaluridasone. Okay. Uh, and Dr. Tiki, uh, wait, I will check the questions again. Okay. While we are waiting for more questions to come in the live chat, uh, how long does the HA filler in the labia majora last, Dr. Dickey? Okay, first it depends on what what type of filler that you use, what brand of filler that you use, and the second is the lifestyle of the patient itself. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know, the low viscosity HA filler will have a shorter half life, a shorter lifespan compared to the very high viscosity filler. So if we talk about just from the uh, uh, the viscosity itself, around six to eight months, because uh, as, as like lips filler, mostly also exists for only six to uh, eight months, but also some lifestyle will give effect uh, on the lifespan of the filler itself. Uh, because some of the patients, after they did the procedure, they will be more confident in their sexual life they did more sexual activity and sometimes they did more sport, it will cause the filler to dissipate readily from the area itself. So in my opinion, uh, you can ask the patients to come back for another procedure uh, every four to six months. If the patient already feels dissatisfied before four months, can we inject it on that time or is it safer to wait at least four months? Uh, first, we do the palpations first to, to make sure whether the filler is still exists there or it's being migrated to another area. Because sometimes, as we know that the labia majora area is a very wide area and loose area, if we use um, low viscosity, sometimes it migrate to the lateral area, which will go to the near the internal pudendal artery. We have to make sure that the filler is not accumulated in that area. If the filler mm -hmm. is accumulated in that area, it's better that we dissolve the, the filler on that area first, and then we re-inject on the medial to the inferior part. Okay, so we have to check really carefully before doing any retouch on that area. Yes. Okay. And, okay, we are still waiting for more questions to come up in the live chat. Maybe you can share also, Dr. Diki, uh, concerning the female genital as we are talking about this. Uh, what about the treatment using energy-based devices? It is, is it also gaining popularity nowadays? Um, this 
same as uh, fillers, the EBD also gaining um, some popularity due to uh, EBD itself will improve the lifestyle of the the life quality of the patients. They will the dyspareunia, the dryness, the um, sometimes if they 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 feel like uh, what is it? Uh, uh, urinary incontinence it also oh, improved yes. by using yes by using the EBD especially the the CO2 fractional laser it will improve a lot and in my practice uh, I like to to apply two modalities at the same time if we talk about the EBD once we do the for example the CO2 laser or the uh, high focus ultrasound laser for the intraitus vagina for vagina then we can apply the HA non cross link to the uh, lining it will enhance the uh, vaginal lining very good that's why sometimes you don't have to inject you can just apply it by topical uh, it's it's very fine okay so it is gaining popularity and we are improving a woman's life by doing this treatment yes because because uh, it's not it's it's not about uh, just appearance of the uh, genital it's also about the increasing the, the 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 mental health the confidence of some women uh, as we know that some older women they, they still like to do sport for example not only cycling for example they like to do swimming and it's very un Lesson for them to see when they're wearing bikini or something that very tight on the downside there. And by using uh, this uh, treatment, the filler and also the EBD, it will give them better confidence. Okay. And what take home message can we give the patients, Dr. Diki? Like, is there anything that they cannot do after doing the treatment? Okay. Uh, in my opinion, after the treatment of HA filler infiltrations in the labia majora, patient should not do any exercise or any activities that involve their external genitalia. For example, they, they, they're not supposed to have intercourse or they're not supposed to do the cycling for at least 72 hours. So the filler will stay at place first and then after that, you can do anything you want. Okay, so for three days, yeah, Dr. Diki, yes. yeah? Okay, for three days. Okay. And speaking about the genital area, Dr. Diki, uh, besides the shape, some women are also concerned about the color. Now, maybe you can share us some insights or some knowledge on how to improve on that also. Okay, the color is quite improving after you did the uh, vagina, uh, sorry, the vulva infiltrations by using the HA filler. Because uh, as we know, as we age, there is a decreasing in the estrogen level and sometimes the vascularizations on the vulva area also decreasing. By giving the HA filler on that area, it will enhance the CD4 interactions with the epithelial lining, causing the proliferations of new vascularizations over there. It will give you mm -hmm. a pinkish appearance. And besides, if you do the labia majora treatment filler using HA on the upper part, all the, all the G spot is not is not being uh, scientifically proven. But by uh, by injecting on the upper part of the labia majora, actually it will protrude the G spot outer. So when they did the sexual intercourse, the patient will feel uh, easily aroused, easily to get satisfied because the, uh, they said the G spot is being uh, uh, is being touched easily because it's protruded outside. Okay, so more satisfaction after doing the filler, uh, yeah, Dr. Diki. So, so the satisfaction is not only come from the partner that the visual uh, is good, but also mm -hmm. for, for the patient itself because the, they, they feel uh, easily to get orgasm due to the protrusions of the G-spots area. Okay, we have one question coming in the live chat, Dr. Diki, from Dr. Ubeta. Should we inject in the same volume for the upper part, middle, and lower part of the labia majora? Uh, it's depend on the 
uh, likeness of the patients uh, because some patients like their their the fulfa to look full on the middle then we mm. can check it more in the uh, middle area but sometimes one uh, some patients like to have it more fuller on the lower we can inject it on the lower area so first uh, to make sure that you inject on the middle and inferior first then after that uh, you can ask the patients how does the the full fat they they want to look alike if they want mm. the full fat to look fuller on the down uh, on the inferior part you inject more there or if the patients want to look fuller on the upper part you inject more there but don't forget to do massage to uh, distribute the filler homogeneously okay so it depends on the likeness of the patient yes yeah. true on the wishes of the patient so we yeah. have to discuss first yeah Dr. Yes, but, but, uh, how how they it, it is the same as as the lips on our face mm -hmm. what how the patients want and actually what the doctors can do actually we have to discuss it first it applies mm -hmm. also for the lips down there <laughs> <laughs> dr dicky you are you are showing us in your presentation about the two techniques using sharp needle and using cannula uh, concerning the safety for this area, is the using the cannula safer than the sharp needle or is it the same or which one is the more easier or more convenient? Maybe you can share more on that. Of course, the more convenient and easier part is using the sharp needle, but it, it comes with a higher uh, risk because you might uh, poke uh, the artery there. Uh, using cannula, uh, sometimes it doesn't feel so comfortable because we dissect the, the layer in the tunica fibrosa, which is very dense there. That's why we have to apply the lidocaine injection first. But in my opinion, uh, as a, if, you, if it's your first time to do the filler, HA filler on the labia mayora, it's better you do using the cannula technique first and make sure you inject in the lower and the medial part and then uh, use the sharp needle to inject just in the middle of the labia mayora. Do not inject too lateral because it will increase the possibility of poking the uh, artery, artery there. Yes. Okay, so that is the safest tip. Still using the cannula is Saver, yeah, Dr. Yes, Dr. Yeah. and don't forget uh, uh, use uh, high G cannula. In this case, I always use the 22 G cannula. Never okay. use uh, smaller than 22 G. 22 G minimal, okay. Yes. Okay. Besides the complications of the pulmonary embolism that we just saw, is there any other complications that might arise that we need to be careful of, Dr. Dicky? Mostly bleeding. That's why we incorporate the epinephrine uh, in the lidocaine to prevent bleeding and to extend the durations of anesthesia on that area. Okay. We'll check on some more in the live chat. Okay. There is still no more questions in the live chat. Uh, talking about the rejuvenation, in one of the questions, uh, a participant mentioned about PRP injection. Maybe can you share with us the benefits of using PRP injection for the female genital carrier? Of course. Uh, inside PRP, there is a lot of growth factor. Uh, and if we make the PRP in the correct way, high growth factor uh, component in the PRP. By incorporating PRP to the HA filler itself, it will enhance the neovascularizations in the labia mayora and causing better uh, appearance for the epidermis, better also the density of the labia mayora, but hmm. never rely only on PRP. Why? Because PRP won't give any volume additions for the labia mayora. If you want to do PRP there, you have to mix with the HA filler uh, because PRP doesn't have any possibility to enhance the volume itself by itself. 
it will just improve the quality of the skin. Yeah, yes, the quality of the skin and also new vascularizations, but there is mm. no improvement in the size. That's why we, we still need the HA filler uh, for the labia mayora. Okay. Okay, Dr. Diki, thank you so much for sharing with us this very interesting topic. And maybe it is a new insight for most of us here. Uh, we thank you so much, Dr. Diki, for also sharing your before after pictures with us. And it is always a pleasure to see your presentation. <laughs> thank you so much, Doctor. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dr. Riki, and we will see you again in our next webinar. Hopefully, it will be an offline webinar, yeah? Thank you. We hope the pandemic will end soon and we can Amen. get there and to see each other alive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Stay safe in Yogyakarta, Dr. Riki. Thank you, Dr. Sylvia. Okay. Thank you, dear participants, for joining us in the first topic. Before we enter the second topic, we will have some commercial break and we will be right back after this. Good afternoon, dear participants. We are back in today's session with our second topic that is also very interesting as the procedure is gaining popularity nowadays in Indonesia. The theme of the topic is body sculpting, personal experience with cryolipolysis that will be brought to you by Dr. Luciano Lanfranchi from Italy. Before I call Dr. Luciano, I will read his curriculum vitae he is a doctor in medicine and surgery and graduated at Milan University with 110, over 110 honors degree, a specialist in plastic and, rec and reconstructive surgery, and also specialized in plastic surgery with a 7070 honors degree. And he also won some awards and honors. Uh, he is the lecturer at the Master of Aesthetic Surgery Luigi Donati hands-on in University of Milano and also hold a Dubai medical license in specialist plastic surgery. Hello, Dr. Luciano. Hello, good morning. Good to <laughs> see you. Unfortunately, virtually, but hopefully in the future we will be able to meet each, see other, each other again. Face to face your, again, yeah. <laughs> in your beautiful country, which I love. Really. It is very interesting that you graduate with a perfect score, yeah, Dr. Luciano. In well, both I, try your, to do my, I try to do my best. <laughs> in both your and, medical degree and also in your plastic reconstructive yeah. surgery. Yes, I only studied in my life, so that's <laughs> it. Wow, so it is very, it's been an honor to have you here and we are really looking forward for your presentation. I'm sure that you will be bombarded with many questions after this, so... Take your place, Dr. Oh. Luciano. <laughs> okay, thank you really very, very much. Uh, good afternoon for you, for everybody, those colleagues who are following us. And as I said before, thank you so much for the wonderful organization, organization as usual in your beautiful country. And hope we will have the opportunity to meet personally. Yes, why not? Maybe next year, who knows? Uh, so today I will talk about this, um, my topic will be about uh, non-invasive uh, procedures, of course. Um, personal experience with cryolipolysis. Uh, I've been using this technology for a long time, almost nine years now. And to be honest, um, we found out a little bit curious the way how a 
plastic surgeon could introduce something that is not invasive to for body sculpting. So this is something I would like to talk about and my experience and some cases and, uh, and questions and answers will have the opportunity for that for sure, which is the most important and interesting part of it. Uh, as I said, as you said before, thank you for your wonderful introduction. Uh, I'm a plastic surgeon. I was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. So I'm half Argentina and half Italian. Now I live in Milano. I'm based in Milan, but I, uh, I work between Milano and Dubai. These are the places where I work. And above all, I like to show my team, which are people that I really love and without whom I would never be able to do all the things that I do. So this is very important. We are not alone. This is these are all my teams we we really enjoy and they are really really important for me so i told you i will talk about my personal experience with color policies what is it how it works why when difference between uh, other kinds of um, other kinds of um, of surgical procedures etc uh, as we know uh, body fat is recognized uh, is a recognized aesthetic concern for patients. If you look at this table, this very interesting study, it represents it represents a seventy five percent of uh, of of what people would would be interested in. That is in excess body and fat in specific areas. Okay, if you talk if you compare it with facial lines and wrinkles, you can understand how important it is, and that's why we have to be and that's why we have to be um, ready to treat them in lots of ways. I will talk today about the um, about the cryolite policies, but there are lots of ways to to reuse it too. Um, um, the majority of people in this study that were asked would prefer non-surgical procedures. That is more than sixty percent of them, which is very important. Thirty-three percent of them would equally consider both surgical and non-invasive one. And 9.1%, they would prefer the surgical one. Of course, being a plastic surgeon, I can offer the three of them. I mean, I can offer all, and I see all kinds of, of people and treat them for sure, if there is a good indication for sure. So what people want, I think this is worldwide. They want fast results, best results, with no downtime, with no pain, uh, with um, with um, a fast result, I want to see it as soon as possible. Something that could be done during all the year, and something that is not written there, which is they want everything to be cheap. And this is not because safety has a price, and I think the quality of the materials we use, etc., has a price. And 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 I think we we all agree on that. There are lots of types of uh, several types of of, um, of 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 body fat tissues, the one we will focus on is the white one, okay, which is the majority of adipose tissue. We find it visceral, both uh, visceral and subcutaneous, and it is the responsible or it condition, let's say, body and skin contouring. That's why this is our, our aim for body contouring. We know that the white fat is the most predominant part of body fat, for sure. The adipocytes store excess energy from food to be released when needed, of course, and the number of adipocytes remains constant during uh, post-puberty, okay? However, cell volume can contract or expand with decreases or increases in weight, respectively, for sure. Methods of fat reductions include shrinking the adipose volume, like lipolysis, and disruption, which is the adipocytolysis, which is something that we want to focus on, and this is something that we stimulate or we create with the uh, cryolipolysis. Of course, I will talk about cold, cooling, cryolipolysis. We know what is it. It's a non-invasive method uh, of reducing fat, of course, without damaging other tissues or structures. Uh, that, and as we will see, this is something really, really important, and it takes part of the safety of the procedure. Uh, the non-invasive devices that the market offers, where there are a lot, of course, uh, the system applies a, cool, a controlled cooling treatment and uh, it is used for fat layer reduction through cold assisted lipolysis for aesthetic purposes. Of course, uh, the cryolipolysis targets subcutaneous, not visceral uh, fat. 
Visceral fat is difficult to treat because it's deeper, it's around organs. And at least with this kind of, of, uh, of device, we cannot treat visceral fat, but we can treat subcutaneous fat, which lies above the muscle. And it is the one responsible for the contouring and the appearance of the, of the bodies, of the body. So cryolipolysis can selective aim that at fat and reduce the subcutaneous fat pack, okay? Without damaging the surrounding other tissues. What can we treat with that? Well, practically every pinchable, which I would say a non-pinchable area. Why? Because we have basically two types of, of applicators and this will allow us to treat practically the whole body as we will see. If you ask me as a plastic surgeon, if it were easy to include in my practice, I would say for sure no. Because I, before this, I was used to be very honest, to deal with my cannulas only, okay? Liposuction, this is something that we freaking do. I'm a plastic surgeon. I remove fat from one place to put it to another one. And to be very honest, these are my typical cases. Okay, as you see here, I will remove, I will, I will purify it and I will inject it with lipofilling, etc. And to be honest, at the beginning, I didn't believe in this in this procedure. I couldn't believe how with something that I couldn't control, I could obtain those uh, results that were shown to me. So um, uh, to be very honest, in my clinic, uh, uh, I didn't want to get a machine, and we've seen in the last 15 years, lots of them that would be kept in the garage without being used. Okay, so uh, getting rust. So um, this was my, my main aim. So I wanted something really, that really worked, of course. So the first thing I checked was the science be be behind the cryolipolysis. What was behind it? Okay, and I started reading. I have a very nice team in which we studied, um, uh, we keep on studying adipose tissue, particularly related to stem cells and multipotential ones, which was very interesting. So, and it's very interesting. So at the time it was something that I really know what I was talking about. And that's why I started to looking up what was this cryolipolysis. Um, the first thing I found out it was that the first report was in 1970, okay? And I found out the original articles, as I will show you here. So in this case, uh, what was reported in 1970, it was reported a six-month-old child with a paniculitis after five minutes, five minutes of applying a popsicle into, <coughs> into his mouth. And he had a two centimeters nodule with transient desquamation and hyperpigmentation. That fortunately disappeared after one month. So this was the first reference of uh, cold stimulating, uh, um, stimulating, creating a paniculitis, okay? So due to this thermal shock. And this is the original article that I could find and I share with you with pleasure. The second one was in 1980. And it was the first time these women that uh, trained themselves uh, 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 riding horses during uh, very extreme temperatures, but it was the first time in which a paniculitis was verified, but with the resolution that left depressed area in the inner part of their tights. Okay, so this was my first approach, and the first thing I read about it uh, before entering this or, or, or getting this kind of technology, starting using them. Um, so everything started at the University of <coughs> Massachusetts and Harvard uh, in 1999. They started studying the effects of cold in the adipose tissue. And these were the first evidence, of case, of the reduction of volume. While they were doing that, I was a young student uh, and in 1999 I was in the University of Milano studying the effects of cold, but to treat uh, like in this case, kidney cancer. So I was, I, I knew that cold could generate, could reduce, could uh, stimulate, uh, um, uh, could kill some kind of cells for sure. And I knew what I was talking about. So before getting this technology and doing liposuctions, that's why when I tell you it was really complicated for me or difficult to include in my practice, 
this is what I want to tell you, the pure story. This is part of my story. So I said how it works. We can treat practically every pinchable and no <coughs> pinchable area. Why? Because we have generally these kind of devices have two applicators, one with suction, like cup in this case. Generally, the one I use is 35 minutes minus 11 degrees centigrade. Uh, and we have another one in those areas which cannot be pinched, in which we have a direct contact on the adipose tissue, okay? Generally 75 minutes minus 13 degrees centigrade, okay? In direct contact with that. But what happens then? Well, this is very important. As I said before, we have <clears throat> lipolysis in which is a reversible metabolic process, okay? Um, but we, what we create with, uh, with cryolipolysis is adipocytolysis, which is something irreversible, as I will show you, because we have cell destruction, okay, which is a consequence, which is a consequence of this thermal shock. So the lipids in fat crystallize at a warmer temperature than the water in other cell types, okay? So what happens? We have a heat extraction from the tissues, crystals will form and stimulate programmed cell death, that is apoptosis in the adipocytes. Then the progression of an inflammatory process removes these dead cells via the lymphatic system to finally obtain our final results, let's say a stable one, after more or less three months. And this is how it works. These are the steps. We have the apoptosis, the inflammatory phase, and the clearance and resolution. Uh, what happens? The number of fat cells in a person, as we said before, has a determin they are determined in adolescence. After, after fat cells are destroyed, and after that, if people gain or lose weight, they will maintain the shape we already obtained after the treatment. But does it really work? Well, yes, but it's not that I am telling you. I mean, it's already uh, checked and we have lots of efficacy and lots of clinical data, okay? There are lots of peer reviewed publications that you can, uh, that you can check with different devices, okay, for sure, with every, every part of the body that was treated and analyzed. And for each of them, these are just examples, but you can download them from PubMed. They were studied in all kinds of way. That is objectively, subjectively, uh, um, studying patient satisfaction with CT scan, with, um, with ultrasound, uh, pictures, 3D reproductions, etc. One that really I like to mention is the one in 19, uh, last year, no, two years ago, uh, 2019, these colleagues, <clears throat> Dr. Jimenez Lozano and Joel, that uh, demonstrated in another way how the, um, how the apoptosis uh, was uh, stimulated. They evidenced in, uh, through a, with molecular markers and with immunohistochemistry um, they confirm the uh, apoptosis, okay? They, they were used, they used the, the periliptin one and the CD68 as uh, distinctive molecular markers for cryolipolysis. And they demonstrated that the lack of periliptin one can be used as uh, to rate dysfunctional, that is dead adipocytes, why the CD68 confirms the presence of macrophage in the uh, in the second part of the um, of these procedures that infiltrate and they degradate and they remove uh, everything that was uh, that was degraded before. So um, they also demonstrated the, the this is very technical, but they also demonstrated the efficacy the, efic the efficiency of the temperature how we've reached and the um, the the depth that could reach in the in the fat pad, which is something really really. Uh, interesting. I just put put this slide here to show you that this is something that is, and we are still being, uh, we are still studying it for sure. I said before that once <laughs> that if these patients gain weight, 
uh, the, the result is durable. And I will tell you that it is true, even if at the beginning as a plastic surgeon, it was the most difficult thing to tell to my patients because they would ask how long would this last? And I always say, well, it is durable, but it was really difficult for me at the beginning since I checked it and I started doing cases and I realized that it kept with the passing of the time, the results. This was the first, uh, the first um, paper I read about this, which this colleague only treated one flank and he has now nine years post uh, treatment follow-up and still we can see even after nine years that there is still a result on that having done his treatment. And this is something I had read. I read it when it was uh, at five years old of the treatment and now he republished that after nine years, excellent. But I only, I can tell you that I also, um, I, I've also seen that. Why? Because I, I found this patient of mine, which she didn't have time to treat both, um, both uh, lower infra mammary uh, abdominal uh, parts and um, and I met her after two years and plus 10 kgs. So in this case, we have gained, she gained weight and two years passed. And this is what I found. Look, treated area and treated area. Of course, these are my shoes because I couldn't believe and I took the picture. So I had, <coughs> I experimented it. I, I trust it, I get it. And she came back, she said, well, after two years, maybe it's time to retreat. To, to treat the other part for sure. So I said, okay, no worries. So I, I, I tell you in my personal practice that I also tested it and I have the proof that after uh, 10 kgs and two years after cardiac policy still I have the result. Of course, we have to consider some things before during our consultations as we do for whatever we do in medicine. But in this case, of course, several things the most important ones, cryoglobulinemia, cold urticaria, cold agglutinin. Of course, if they are people that have really uh, certain diseases, they won't, they won't think about uh, uh, reducing their or, or getting in shape for sure. If they have really important ones, such as post-surgery, scar tissue, open wounds, etc. So that's why it's very important to spend time during the consultation to be very clear. And as this guy, which is an engineer, he has nothing to do with medicine because he builds beautiful cars. He always says, <clears throat> even if you have the best technologies, like a hypercar, you always have to drive very careful, very carefully, okay? So that it is for whatever we do. Nothing, I think, is simple in what we do in medicine. When you think it is, tack, there you risk having a, a problem, okay? So, the most things that generally I see, which is a contraindication for these, are hernias or big diastasis. Okay, like in this case, <clears throat> this woman gets, came to my attention saying, but maybe I could do uh, the cryolite policies here, there. I said, no, look, you have a big diastasis here, so your case is really surgical. And I had to make a big, big uh, abdominal wall reconstructions, correcting the umbilical hernia, umbilical hernia. So this is it. Of course, not our patients are right candidates for this kind of aesthetic treatments. In this case, as you've seen before, this girl was treated with, with a completely abdominal wall reconstruction, as you see here. This 32-year-old <clears throat> man uh, lost <clears throat> 70 kgs after a bar bariatric surgery. And I treated him, of course, for the functional problems, but I removed, I had to, as you see here, do big, big dermolipectomies to reshape him again. And this is a sample, an example of abdominal wall reconstruction. So these are our cases in which we need to recognize and of course, and we need, and we have to say no. Um, common adverse effects that we see, well, pulling effect, tugging sensation, pinching, numbness, you can have them. I've seen three cases of really big, big uh, and huge pain after the treatment in which I had to treat them with uh, strong painkillers. This is something I've seen. Uh, the incidence, well, 
we have something that is called the paradoxical hyperplasia, which is something we are studying in which we have the increase, of course, the, the, the situation worsens for sure. Uh, I've seen it, I've seen it uh, in five cases in Middle East, not in Italy, because maybe uh, there could be some kind of genetic predisposition, etc. cetera. Um, lots of theories, we could talk only <clears throat> one or two hours only about this, but it's not the case. Late onset pain, I've seen that for sure. Um, I said before, hyperpigmentation. I had one case that lasted for uh, 16 months, okay, and then it faded away. It tends to resolve. Uh, Vasovagal symptoms, I've seen them, particularly in very strong people, very well trained one after the treatment. And these are the force I've seen. <clears throat> I've never seen a freeze burn personally but I've seen done because of errors with other machines, as I will show you, or with uh, not taking care of the patient, I mean, placing it in the wrong way, the paradoxical adipose hyperplasia, I told you, it can be treated afterwards with a liposuction or a complete abdominoplasty, depending on the area. This is another chapter, as I said before, but I said, as I said before, the safety profile is the most important for me. The scientific background, I told you, the certifications for sure, and the proven technology that is all that has been published and studied about the device we're talking about. As <clears throat> Grant Stevens says, the money you save up in the, at the beginning, it will cost you big at the end, and I completely agree, okay? We know what a cold, a simple ice pack can, ca can cause over the skin if left for more uh, or used in a wrong way, so I didn't want that, I don't want that. Cold and safety for me is like what I call the Formula One technology. That is, I want everything, the best technologies, the best technologies and the best control. That is a machine that takes care in lifetime what is happening in my patient's skin and everything and adipose tissue, etc. So this is very, very important. Of course, uh, this system detects body tempor temperature adjusted in real time and warrant is uniform and stable temperature that have to be kept up for sure and is always monitored. And in case everything happens, it will, boom, it will block it. So we have two barriers, which is the first one is the gel pad that we will apply. Gel pad, gel, depending on the, on the machine that you are using, this is very important because it protects the skin. And the other one is what you have inside your machines, the kind of sensors that it will block in case of any um, of any risk of burning, of course. Um, I'm telling you at the beginning if it was difficult or not to include in my practice. Well, I called a, co um, a non-certified, uh, well, a non, let's say, well-studied um, um, device before getting the certified one, I would say like that. And, uh, and to be honest, when they came after 20 minutes, they burned my patients. I didn't even touch her. So, uh, you can imagine how difficult it was to include in my practice, really, to trust something like this, having experienced this. Fortunately, I didn't see this or this or this, which is really, could have been really, really important. It has to be, for sure, quite uh, comfortable for the patients. They take care of them. I mean, they, they have to be relaxed. And each device keeps on being developed so as to warranty more ergonomics and better results, for sure. I would like to show you, and I selected some, as you will see, some particular results I've chosen for you, and let's analyze them for sure. Well, this is a 35-year-old man in which was treated the uh, submental area uh, with two, let's say, it's two, uh, two treatments, uh, one overlapping the other one in one session. And this is the result after 32 days and the plus 2.5 kgs, kilograms, okay? Uh, he came after his holidays and he says, no, no, don't look, don't take the pictures because I, I gained two, more than two kgs and it's not okay. And as you see here, this is me. I don't know if the resolution is okay, but this is me. I, I, I didn't even use the, the, the non-reflective background because I just wanted to check. And when we put the pictures together, we, he remained like this because he couldn't believe that we, even when with 2.5 kgs more, he had those that uh, that result. So um, this is one of the cases. Uh, other cases which I could check you after two years and and weight gain, as you as you see here. Uh, of course, it is not like 
like two years before, but I want to show you something like in this case here, this is the better picture. You see the shape we gain, okay, is already kept, even if she gained weight. So this is very important, something I analyzed with the patient for sure. As you see here, this is a very important lawyer in Milano. He came to my attention for a liposuction. And I, say, and I said, look, I can offer cryolipolysis. It could really work well on you. And this is five months after, plus uh, 4.5 kgs and no training. This guy loves boxing. He trains himself a lot. As you see here, his latissimus dose before the treatment was really wide and really tough. And this is five months after, because he went on holiday. He, let's say he couldn't, he didn't have the time to exercise anymore and he gained 4.5 kgs, okay? And in this case, even if he, ha if he, if he uh, gained weight and didn't train himself, you can see that we could keep the shape. Was treated the lower abdominal, uh, the inframammary area and the flanks here, as you see. This is another case, interesting one, because a very well-trained guy, uh, 34 years old, <coughs> He got infected with toxoplasmosis. He had lots of internal trouble, et cetera, et cetera. And he couldn't train himself. He came to me, to my attention and said, look, uh, I used to be well-trained, et cetera, et cetera. Can we do something? Okay, for sure. And this is three months after treating the lower abdominal wall. This is eight months having treated the complete abdomen and flanks. Of course, he had steel inside because his muscles have always been well sculpture, but with no training, this is something very stable that you can see here. The scar you see here, because he had been operated long time ago because of, um, of a sarcoma, but has nothing to do with it, long time ago, so that's it. This is a typical case, uh, patient in her 60s, reaching her 60s, in which they come and they ask for modeling because they cannot stand their, maybe wearing their trousers. We need to tell them, I always tell them, look, it could really show the difference because it would be maybe interesting to treat the whole abdomen. She didn't want to do that, but she came back, as you see here, to treat the upper part because as you can see, even if she had lost 2.5 kgs, we obtained the shape that it looks as if, was, if it has been uh, beaten by a shark there. So uh, that's why she came there, it's something uh, that we need to talk to them. And this is the power of the cryolipolysis. This is another interesting case because this woman also treated the complete abdomen, but for some reasons she couldn't treat, uh, she didn't have time and she couldn't treat this part, okay? So the, the, the left part here, this one. So, uh, so she came because she started looking at, her, at herself asymmetric and said, look, doctor, maybe it's the time that I go back and we finish just the last part that we left uh, without being treated. And she, and she told me, you should take this picture because this is a really difference between in a thin person, between a treated and an untreated area. So that's why I'm showing you this kind of particular uh, um, cases. Personally, and I know the limits, those of you who do surgeries, liposuctions, brachioplasty, etc., we know the risks and limits of treating the arms, okay? And this is something that our patients, my patients, keep on asking. At least in Italy, they are very, very, very uh, cared about that. They take really care about that. This was a female, 31 years old, and I said, well, <clears throat> I can offer you <clears throat> the cryolipos, she didn't want surgery, etc. And this was the result after one month. I could have repeated once more, okay, for sure to obtain more, but she didn't want. So if she's happy, I'm happy too, because I, we see the result. Another case, much more complicated, I would say, because 36 years old, as you see there, and she had been telling me, what can I do? Do me a liposuction. I, and I said, for this pseudo in aesthetism, I would never treat, me, treat you, sorry. You can do massage, you can do mesotherapy, whatever, but I won't treat you. When I got this machine, I called her back and as you can see, very sportive woman, boom, this is my result. <clears throat> she was extremely happy, really, as you can imagine. Other cases, 63 years old, this was more to stimulate her, to take care of, of her, to, to walk more, to eat better, etc. So uh, I treated one, one treatment, this is 
four months after, I could have treated more, but it was, that was not our deal. Remember that we need to stimulate our patients to take care of them, to exercise, to move, uh, to eat well, <clears throat> and to take care for sure of them. This is very, very important. And that was our, uh, our deal, I would say. Sometimes we have this big and so positive um, uh, results, okay? Like in this case, this woman treated only one arm, as you can imagine, okay? This one, this is the untreated one. And this was 14 days after. She called me and she said, look, I start to see the difference. And I said, it is impossible because we need at least two months to see it. I took the picture as you see there, that's why it's not so well centrated and everything. And as you can see, the treated, the untreated area. In this case, I think it's the record of, of results. I don't know if those of you who use it have seen this, but that's why I, I share this experience with you. This would be a typical surgical, let's say, retro areolar glandular removal, okay? Surgically. Under local anesthesia, we remove this, this is the result. But what we generally find out is the pseudo gynecomastia, like in this case, okay? And this is four months after the treatment. As you can see, excellent results. You need to, you need to have, uh, uh, let's say, a, a, an excellent point of view from, from the endocrinologic point of view, for sure, before treating it. You can use it. It is certified to, to treat gynecomastia, as you see here. And in case we need to explain our patient that the, the, the gland, when it is so rigid and remains retroareolar, could pop up and we could need after the treatment, like could be, for example, the cryolipolysis, we would need to remove it once, to remove it under local anesthesia, as I showed you before. So in these cases, we can use it. We need, I always prescribe, um, I always prescribe uh, ultrasound, okay? And, uh, and, I, and I do it, as you see there, more 32 years old, as you see there, and we can smooth it for sure. This is another interesting case because this woman, uh, did all these treatments in the lower abdomen, as you see here, and on flanks, and she disappeared for 14 months. After 14 months, she called me and she says, doctor, we need to redo everything again. I said, why? Because I gained seven kgs and I'm in menopause. So she came to me, I matched it with this. These are the pictures that I took at the time. I projected it in my screen and I said, I see nothing because as you can see, even if she gains seven kgs, you wouldn't practically notice it. This, something very particular, look at this area. It was the untreated area. I didn't treat this area. I didn't treat this area, but you can see the rigidity and the volume, okay? And the, <clears throat> and the skin retraction that you see there. So this is an untreated area, as you see there. So there we could, recognize some of the seven kgs he has more. But I would say in the back part of her body, in the buttocks, she gained it really well. We can really see where, they, where she gained these seven kgs or, or, or most part of them. Was treated, of course, the tight area, exterior and exterior. I've shown this picture and I said, take care of you, restart training yourself, eat well. And that was it. I, I never treated her, her again. Yeah, she was happy. She regained her life. This was stimulated by the hormonal, uh, I would say, a hormonal hurricane during menopause at the beginning, of course, before getting stable. So that's it. Of course, we can treat some details, like in this, in this case, depending on the machine you're using, the applicators you have, etc. Like in this case, she had only, as you see here, a small uh, fat pad subgluteal one that I could smooth. Other interesting case, she came to my attention year bef years before for a complete abdominal wall reconstruction after twin pregnancy. I operated her, as you see here, I reconstructed the whole abdominal wall. I, re I reduced the, the, the big diastasis she had. And after several years, she came complaining that she could see, this is a pre-op, that she could see these areas you see there that's, that was popping up just on the right size of her pubis, pubic area. And this is my result of three, after three months after cryolipolysis. I said, we will try. I think it could really work. 
I tried my device and it was okay. So it's worth trying. If it doesn't work or if you are not happy, I can use the lipo, a small liposuction. And this was the area as soon as I finished freezing that area, as you see there. So only monolateral one. After lip, liposuction, can we use it? Yes, of course. And I tell you this story. This is a patient for, that came for gynecomastia. Uh, one of my colleagues operated him using uh, an ultrasound cannula. I don't know what. I mean, so complicated new device for liposuction with uh, radio frequency. I don't know what. And this was the, 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 his results. Of course, the, 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 the patient was not happy with the result. Okay, as you see here, 10 months after liposuction, this was the situation. Yes not that big reduction and this was and i said to my colleague well let's not operate him but let's try the cryolite policy because it could really help and he would be happy and this is the result after three months of cryolite policy so there is no contraindication to after liposuction i use it and i show you in this case with the whole complete story you see it before before, after and before after the liposuction and after the cryolite policy treatment Happy patient, happy doctors, everyone is happy, fortunately. In 2020, and I invite you to conclude, and I invite you to, to check it, we published this year, last year, sorry, uh, this study in body perception and motivations on patient, in patients undergoing cryolite policies. The result from a question, from a, from a patient questionnaire, which was very, very interesting because we, made some kind of profile of these patients, their expectations and their results, if they were happy or not to take it. So I invite you to read it. The most important thing as, uh, of this paper is how important it is to understand, and this is for everything we do in our jobs, and each individual underlines expectations, okay? To, and <clears throat> to better assess whether they can be realistic realistically um, uh, realized, okay? I think it always, so as I always see, uh, time is expensive, but I'm not talking, I'm not talking about money, uh, even if it is, of course, from, from that point of view, it, it is expensive, but it is not the, it is the time that we give to someone that we are uh, uh, getting from, or, or not giving to someone else. So, uh, that's why for me, money, for me, uh, time is expensive, but it is better to spend time more, uh, more time before rather than after to give explanation. And this is very important. And this paper could help you to better understand, hopefully, your, your patients, not only for, for cryolite policies, but for every, every day, every, every, every request we have. And hopefully you will, you will have the opportunity to read it. Of course, if not, you write me and I will send it to you. No worries. To conclude, I will say we try. That's why we are here to be as scientific as possible. Uh, as I always say to my patients, one plus one never strike, uh, never strikes two in medicine. Uh, it is not like engineering, etc. But we try to uh, improve our techniques to the predictability of our results the technologies we use, the materials you use. And that's why we are in this beautiful Congress to share our experiences and to be better than we used to be yesterday, uh, to offer more to our patients better. And as I always tell them, always talking to them, never one plus one strikes two because each one reacts in, in a different way. We, 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 that's why we, we are like single snowflakes. As I always say, it's like it's unique and, uh, and unrepeatable. And thank you very much for your attention. Hope to see you personally in uh, Jakarta soon. Thank you very, very much. Okay, thank you, Dr. Luciano, for the very interesting presentation. We already have some questions coming in the live chat. The first question is from Dr. Kishanti, uh, she is asking about what characteristics should we consider most when we are choosing which machine to buy? Like, as you know, we nowadays there are many different brands from many different manufacturers. What should we pay attention to to make sure that, like you said, safety is the first thing? 
uh, yes, it is mandatory for, for us, for whatever we do safety, for sure. Uh, the first thing is to see how it works, the scientific backgrounds, if, they, if, if it has been developed during the years, what is their future, what are they aiming for, what they think. And I think something very important, which is the support from the company that makes the difference. That is uh, how to deal with that. The training is very important. Uh, training for those who are not surgeons, maybe for those who are surgeons, it, is, it could be easier, but for those who are approaching for the first time for the body contouring, I think that a good training makes for sure the, the, um, the difference. Uh, you need to try them. You need to see personally your before and after uh, treatments, I mean, the results and uh, the comfort for the patient. Uh, generally, I prefer machines that only do one thing. I said before, I'm a surgeon. So I operate a lot. This is not the, 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 the most common thing that I do. It's something that goes parallel that I follow up personally for sure. Mm -hmm. But if I get a machine, it has to be, uh, if I get a laser, it should be laser. If I get, I don't know, uh, uh, cryolipolysis, it must do only cryolipolysis. I don't like the combo ones, which do mm. the multi-platforms, mm. okay? A difference if, if you have a laser with different kind of range, that's perfect. But if you have, I don't know, laser with, I don't know, with cryolipolysis, I wouldn't get that. But I don't know. This is my point of view. This is not, I mean, the, the, the law. This is, you ask me that, I, this is personal. Okay, that is a certain tips for choosing and buying a cryolipolysis machine. Okay. And the next question, doctor, also from Dr. Keshanti, will yeah. it make the skin sag following the fat cell apoptosis? Uh, you know, this is something I didn't mention, sorry. I generally mm -hmm. mentioned it, but I forgot to say it. You know where I was really afraid of that at the beginning, treating mm -hmm. the arms. The arms. Because we know the risk there. And People will tell us what happens with my skin. The first, <clears throat> the first case I show you, they also have some stretch marks, etc. And they begin to say, but what will happen with this? Will it remain saggy? Well, I've never seen that. I see the opposite. I see much more compact and tightness. Of course, so this is not this is something that you don't have to have to be um, you don't have to be uh, afraid of. Okay. Another question from Dr. Shirley. In mm -hmm. two months, while waiting for the results to take place, did you combine it with another treatment, like maybe mesolipo injection or any other energy-based devices? So <clears throat> lots of my colleagues would combine their combos, etc. To be very honest, what I've shown you is pure cryolipolysis results. That mm -hmm. is, I only give the main name as a doctor is to stimulate them to take care of them. Okay, this is what I tell them. Okay, we do it. Since we are creating a thermal shock and your body will need to clean what we in a way destroy with apoptosis, it is recommended to increase a little bit more the exercise, particularly the aerobic one. But to be very honest, in the cases I've shown you, that's why I've, I've chosen particular ones. It's not they gained weight, they lost weight. Lots of them didn't even train. So uh, this is pure effect. I think that if you combine, for example, with deep muscular stimulation, and we know uh, uh, lots of new devices that are coming out that are already well established in the scientific community, etc., cetera, um, you can obtain for sure better results. So it's up to you. But the only thing I tell them that if they have pain or to avoid pain after the treatment, they can use particularly in the abdominal area and in the tight, something really tight, a binder or something mm -hmm. like that, that could help. But for the rest, no, I give, um, I give uh, uh, natural, you know, draining, uh, draining, uh, um, uh, not, not, not drugs because they are natural, uh, uh, bromelain, 
I give bromelain and uh, curcuma high dosage, but it's just for them to 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 keep them uh, to keep them clean and to reduce as as much water as possible. But for other things, no. Okay. And Dr. Maria Angelina also asked, Doctor, in concern of safety, is there any limitation for the total area to be treated at the same time? Like. Uh, in no. one day? Uh, um, it depends on the machine you are using. Mm -hmm. I use the one that takes 35 minutes, which, which is quite fast. Mm -hmm. There are those that take longer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so in my personal case, I wouldn't do more than six cycles per session. Mm -hmm. Maybe also because the patient will get bored for sure, even if they... <laughs> if they chat, if they do, they watch a film, but it's too much time and they, they have back in their pain. So uh, is that, and of course, maybe what my colleague was asking, if, if, if happens something this, you retreat the air. There are colleagues that are treating twice at the same time. That is, they mm. do one treatment, they wait a couple of minutes and they retreat the area. Mm. I am not from that school, but, I, I'm not against that, but nothing will happen. I've never seen any burnt, or, as I said before, or something uh, when I overlap the areas, which is something very common in this area and in the, in the abdominal wall for sure. So there is no indication to overlap it. That, it. that means that one central area would be treated twice in one hour. So okay. I, I think I, I hope I answered my colleague's question. Okay. And in the same area, if it is needed in your pictures, for the same area, did you treat only once or you do multiple treatments for the same the area? The treatments I showed you, there were only one treatment. It is very, patients, maybe they would come back to the same area after many other areas. That is, they come from one precisely area. But it's very difficult that they, they would like to retreat it once more. They would start thinking about maybe another one, looking at the result you obtained in, mm -hmm. in the first area that was treated. But uh, generally, I tell them, we treat it, we see together, we see the pictures, you tell me your feedback, which is very important. That's why it's very important. I talk a lot to them. And, uh, but rarely they come to the same one in it brief period yeah after treatment sure it is needed to treat the same area for the second time how long do you think we should wait before touching the same area again <clears throat> i would wait at least four months four months because i want it to be stable i want to to see very well and that's it and mean meanwhile maybe they treat another area this is very common yeah why not okay Another question from Dr. Ajeng. Uh, doctor, mm -hmm. what about patient after going through the sexual caesarea? Can we do the cryolipolysis on their abdomen area? Uh, yes, of course. There is no problem. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, something that happens is that maybe they deliver their children, okay? Mm -hmm. And they come immediately. Of course, women want to take care of them, okay? Uh, because they see their bodies change, etc. So in that case, we need to say no. I always say no for whatever. Now you enjoy your baby. You enjoy if you, <clears throat> if you are uh, uh, blessed, uh, let's say, uh, and you can breastfeed him or, or her, enjoy it because it's part of you. Something is your uh, benefit, uh, something you can do. And it's, it must be really nice and a big, and then you will find the right time when it's time to take care of you. But now, this is very common in Italy. Eh? We run a lot and they deliver, they start by saying, so doctor, I want to do this, this and that. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Enjoy being a mother. Enjoy being a mother, your moment with your baby, which is something that I cannot do. I would never because I'm a man. So, and we know how difficult it is for you to be mothers for sure, but then I will take care of you, no worries. But once everything is stable, you can treat them. The only thing I tell you is be careful. As I've seen 
those, that's why I've chosen those, I'm happy because I've chosen those surgical cases in which they came when everything was okay. They, they had big uh, uh, muscle diastasis. Thanks, and in that case, you have to be careful because you could have, if you have the diastasis, it's okay, but you could have the um, umbilicus hernia. And in mm -hmm. that case, it could be, uh, it could be uh, contraindicated to, to treat with this because it sucks mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and then you can freeze the wrong area, let's say. So, but uh, you can use it. Caesarean is not a contraindication at all. Okay. Touch, yeah. touch the abdominal wall, touch it. In contraction, uh, that's why it's very important to touch the patient, to see the patient and, and the abdominal wall is mandatory, yeah. Okay. In your experience, how long would you wait after the delivery? Well, the uh, minimum time. <laughs> one time, uh, uh, I would say, uh, I would say one year. One year I'm, after I'm the that. delivery. I uh, because I, to be very honest, uh, maybe uh, not all of my colleagues agree with me, but I am the one that. As I said before, I think it was clear, I would stimulate the mother to take care of, 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 of her or his new girl boyfriend <laughs> that is this beautiful creature. For, so mm -hmm. uh, I, try to, uh, I try to tell him, no, it's not the right time. Let's wait. <laughs> Show me the picture of your baby. Send me that. It grows. Whatever you need, fantastic, but not for this. It's not the time. Just, I try to... I try to, to, to play on the psychological point of view, of course, against any of my interests because we want to work, but I think it's fair that way. I mean, okay, so. embrace the motherhood first and embrace yeah. the bulkiness. <laughs> yeah, it's secondary. We will take care of that. They, no, they are happy because they, I show these pictures. I show them, each of us should, I, uh, we show them for each district and... And I think that in this case, they, they, they see themselves reflected because they are so typical. And they say, okay, so they, they keep, they come down and I say, okay, he will take care of me when, when it will be the right time, the right moment. Okay. Another question from Dr. Maya. Uh, she mm -hmm. is asking, how do you combine this with the treatment for tightening the skin? Maybe with any other energy-based devices to tighten the skin? Yes, there are lots of protocols. I mean, you can use uh, your frequency, you can do, there are lots of devices mm -hmm. there. Uh, the most important thing is that they have to be compatible between them. At the beginning, since we are creating this stress on the adipose tissue and this numbness remains for, uh, I will be very honest. I tried it in my flanks and it, rest and it stayed for 17 days mm -hmm. that I didn't feel anything in my flanks. Um, and uh, after you see that it is stable, you can start doing that. There are lots of point of view. There are some of my colleagues that would do immediately. Um, I would prefer to leave that, let's say, period of, uh, of, of quiet and uh, and then start on with other with other procedures and the one i think is the best combination could be with the deep uh, muscular stimulation that could be something really uh, really nice yeah okay so would you wait for at least four months or maybe earlier than that no 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 earlier you can do it earlier. i would wait for at least two two or three weeks two okay. or three weeks that everything is stable and you can you, you can combine, combine yes, it sure. with and any other treatment. Okay. Yes, yes, no, no, no. It is the same that when they ask you, when you put the threads, when can you use the filler? Mm. Also there, we could discuss. <laughs> okay. And Dr. Maria Angeline is asking, doctor, can you please explain to us how to identify the muscle diastasis case in the abdomen? How maybe you can explain to us? Ah, it's very simple. The patient is lying down. Mm -hmm. You make her raise the legs and it pops up. You see it, you touch it, you see it. The maneuver, I think she intended. Yes. To, yes. Um, and in that case, you see it perfectly. You see abdominal wall, diastasis. And umbilicus, generally, if they have a little hernia. 
That's the only thing. So mm -hmm. help them with your, with your arms. These are the patient's legs. You put them up, you raise them, and you leave them, and you see it. When they're in maximum contraction, boom. You see if there is protrusion or not. And if we see any diastasis recti, is it a contraindication if there is no hernia, only diastasis recti? If it is, uh, no, if you, <clears throat> generally these patients have, a, have um, uh, the ones that come to our attention have a thick fat pad. So you can, you can treat them, no worries, mm -hmm. okay? The problem is when they are too thin, because maybe you can get the fascia, the muscular fascia, mm -hmm. but in that case, you need to operate them. They, they won't complain about that. So, mm -hmm. uh, so there is no contraindication. The problem is the hernia. Uh, big diastasis, you can have them, but um, in that case, if they are really big, they have other problems, okay? That's why the surgery is mandatory. But generally, uh, we will, you will find some small, medium diastasis, and if you find them without hernia, um, the, the, the cold would never get till there, because you have all the fat pad which tends to be thick. So choose them with thick fat pad. This should be the, okay. the right answer. Okay. Doctor, with the side effects that you are saying before, like you said mm -hmm. that numbness is quite a common thing as a side effect. Yeah. Uh, mostly in the arms, when we are treating the arms, some patients complain about numbness or tingling in their fingers that can be prolonged. What can we do to fasten that to disappear? <clears throat> Well, you need, as I always tell them, the first thing is <clears throat> you need to apply your applicator in the right way, of mm -hmm. course, because if not, you can, of course, you can, um, you can have two consequences. One is from direct cold, mm -hmm. okay? And the other one is maybe because they, they just lie there, the weight of their arm on the applicator, okay? Mm -hmm. And it is like when you remain... Uh, slept over the table no yes. then you have the numbness that could last so mm -hmm. in that case if you add both of them that is the thermal shock with the mechanical uh, compression in that case of course you would have long lasting you could have long lasting uh, arms and numbness particularly if you put it to medium okay mm -hmm. so you have to be very, very central to avoid this. What you are having, I've never seen uh, permanent injuries, nerve injuries, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think is the, um, the, the thermal shock together with the mechanical one that gives us um, a sonotmesis, okay? We, we, we shock the, the, the fibers and that's why we have this. If you have it, what I tell my patients, we need to desensibilize it. That is, they need to touch different things to use it so that in a way, till it gets uh, better, they, um, they forget that mm -hmm. little numbness. I think it's, it's okay. But... No medication to be given? No, the, there are medications that stimulate that, but I would, no. No, you can give them vitamins that stimulate, I mean, uh, vitamin complex, etc. that could help. Mm -hmm. But I've never seen really something uh, durable, really, and limitating. They said, yes, I had it for five, 10 days, maybe, but it's okay. The, the ones that lasted more. Okay. So usually in your, in your experience, you see that it will disappear as time goes by. Yeah. Okay. It's very then, difficult to, to have a lesion. No, no. Okay. And maybe one last question, doctor. In the machine, we have a setting to choose like the degree of the temperature, like minus seven, minus nine, minus 11. In your opinion, is it the colder it gets, the better it is? Or how can we pick the right temperature for the right location? Maybe you can give some insights on that. Well, it is not... <clears throat> I, I don't think is of course we need to go below zero that's for mm -hmm. sure to obtain a shock a thermal shock um, as I said before because I asked and I, I, I we did the test etc minus 11 is for fat pad with suction 
and with direct contact in those nodes, in those not pinchable areas, I would use minus 13. It is not that I use it, it is the machine that does that. But mm -hmm. the difference, and going back to why, which machine choose to choose, it is that not all of them, we, we need to get to the, to the temperature we desire in the fastest time to maintain for the, the long, the, the whole treatment, mm. but also it has to be homogeneous because some mm. of them would say, okay, you have minus seven degrees. It's okay, it could work. Maybe you need two treatments or three to obtain the same result, but who cares? The problem is that maybe they reach that temperature, but not in a smooth way. Some part of the applicators are, are, I don't know, zero degrees. Some of them are minus two, etc. This is from the technical point of view what I would, what I would uh, say. But generally, that standard because more if you increase, if you go lower, then you risk having burns. I'm a plastic surgeon and I worked in a burn unit when I was a resident, and and we know what burn can 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 create. So that that that's it. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Luciano, for sharing with us. We have come Thank to you. the end of our time. <laughs> it is very pleasant to see your presentation. It is very thorough, very informative, backed up with lots of science. Thank you so much. No wonder you Thank get you. the perfect score every time. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Thank you so much. Thank you for, so much for you. Uh, to all the team, excellent. And really, I miss um, Indonesia. I miss Jakarta. I miss the live Congress personally, but I'd like to see you all personally. And hopefully this will happen as soon as possible. But yes. Thank you really, really very much to you and to all the colleagues that followed us. We can, whatever they need, they know where to find me and uh, we can discuss whatever they want. It's only a big, big pleasure that helps us to be better and to, to learn from each other, which is the most important thing. Thank you so, so much, really. Okay, thank you for sharing. Hopefully we can meet face-to-face <laughs> -face next year. Stay safe Hopefully. in Italy. <laughs> okay. Take care, take care, guys, all take of care. you. Thank you, thank you mm -hmm. so much. Thank you for all the participants for sharing this session with us, for asking questions and also for listening. Uh, I believe that you will learn a lot and have learned a lot. And I also believe that you are still eager to learn more. You can contact Dr. Luciano. He has given us his contact. And also please look forward for our next sessions in ISWAM virtual as there will be more topics to be covered. Stay safe wherever you are and see you in the next webinar.